Hello guys, this is Wits Lounge, learning made easy. And in today's video, we're going to be considering an important concept known as rules for naming alkanes. Um, the link to an earlier study on naming organic compounds is actually found in the description of this video. So please don't forget to look it up. Remember, like and subscribe. So let's get into the study. The first thing I would like to describe before we come to naming alkanes is the term alkanes. Alkanes are aliphatic saturated hydrocarbons. When I say aliphatic saturated hydrocarbons, I simply mean um, a group of organic compounds that contain only hydrogen and carbon and um, only possess single bonds. Specifically, what we're going to be concentrating on are these rules to name alkanes. Okay, so let's get into it. Now, the first rule in naming an alkane is that when naming an unsubstituted or unbranched alkane, the infix which corresponds to the number of carbon atoms in the chain is attached to the suffix a n e what this actually means is this let's look at the screen for instance imagine i have a particular chain of alkane remember the first rule has to do with naming alkanes that are not substituted or unbranched let's say we have ch3 ch2 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 ch3 i'll say something about filling this hydrogen later but let's understand this concept now the the infix for five carbon atoms is pent what do we do after we have this pent because it's an alkane we now simply add a n e to the mix so we call it together as what pentane very easy right let's consider another straight chain alkane for instance imagine we have something like let's say one two three okay let's fill the hydrogens now remember carbon can only be attached to four bonds or carbon can only form four bonds and we have one here the remaining three would be attached to hydrogen the remaining three will be attached to hydrogen here we have one bond here and one bond here which means the remaining two will be attached to um hydrogen then here is just one bond here so the remaining will be attached to hydrogen okay so with that said according to the rule the rule simply says find the infix that corresponds to the carbon atoms and the infix that corresponds to one two three carbon atom is prop you write it out and because this is an alkane you simply attach a and a rule number one all settled i hope that is understood we go to the next rule rule number two rule number two simply states that when naming a branched or substituted alkane firstly identify the parent chain and what's the parent chain the parent chain is the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms so let's look at it now before we get into the whole diagram i want you to know that the parent chain must not always be straight in some cases it might be bent all you simply need to do is to count from terminal to terminal carbon, one end of a carbon atom to the other end of a carbon atom, and then find the one that has the longest chain. That one with the longest chain is going to be your parent chain. Let's look at the screen to understand this. Okay, so what we're simply going to do, I'm, I'm not going to include the hydrogen for now, uh, simply just for us to understand it, but probably later I'll put it there, but just understand. If you look at the screen, you will notice that we have um, a terminal carbon here a terminal carbon is the last carbon in the chain so this is an end carbon this is an end carbon and that too is an end carbon so what do we do we count from end to end and find out what end to end is the longest chain that would be the parent chain so let's check this is one two three four five we have five carbon for the straight guys then we have one two three four five six from here to here we have six and then we have one two three four five six seven eight and then we have eight now if you notice amongst the three terminal ends we counted from we found out that the particular chain of carbon atoms with the longest chain longest continuous chain is this one so what i do or i advise to do is to cut it out in most cases just use your pencil to circle around it so that you can be able to know that that is your parent chain now having identified the parent chain to name the parent chain you simply name it as an unbranched or unsubstituted okay you count the number of carbon atoms in the parent chain so one two three four five six seven eight and the number eight simply is represented by oct then you attach a and e now note this is just the name of the parent chain we'll get to how to name this particular substituent okay with that said we go to the next rule which is allocate locants to the parent chain starting from the end closest to a substituent now a substituent is simply a group of atom or anything that is attached to the parent chain now please hydrogen is not a substituent 
hydrogen is not a substance substance could be alkyl groups it could be halogens it could be anything but anything that is not part of the parent chain is referred to as a substance now if you look at our screen you will notice that this particular longest chain is the parent chain and every other thing attached to this parent chain is what we refer to as a substance let's let's fill the hydrogen for this guy and we have ch3 so you notice something this particular carbon atom here is an alkyl group anytime a saturated chain of carbon atoms occurs as a substituent it is the alkyl group now the alkyl group is actually very simple to name but please look up the infixes of carbon atoms in a chain now the infix that represents one carbon atom is met you simply attach ail to it and it becomes methyl group so this is the methyl group good now um, back to what we are saying about root 3. Root 3 says we should allocate locants, but we should start from an end closest to a substituent. Now, so we're going to come from here to the substituent and from here to the substituent and see which one of them is closer. Any end that is the closer, that's where you're going to be allocating your locant from. So we have, if we come from here, this is going to be 1, this is 2, this is 3, then we get to 4 with our substituent. If we come from the other end, we count 1, 2, three four five before we get to our substituent so which means that if we are to count we should count from the end that is closer and if you look at it the end that is closer is this end so let's allocate our locants properly so that's going to be one two three four five six seven eight so you simply allocate locants to the carbon atoms of the parent chain starting from the end closest to the substituent okay let's try another example imagine we had for instance this particular chain one two three four five and i had cl so if we are to count or allocate locants are we going to start from this end or from that end yes it's quite obvious we have to start from this end because if we start from here you're going to count one two three four carbon atoms before you get to a substituent so but if you come from here, you just count one and on the second carbon, you've gotten to a substituent. So remember, allocate locants starting from the end closest to a substituent. So let's do that. This is going to be one, two, three, four, and five. Quite simple, right? So we go to the next rule, which is rule number four. Rule number four simply states that if multiple chains occur as the longest continuous chain, the parent chain becomes the longest continuous chain with the most substituent okay this seems confusing but let me help you understand this let's look at the screen now if you happen to have a particular chain of carbon atom let's say you have something like so this is going to be h3 uh there are one two three bonds formed so remaining just one there are one two three remaining just one there are one two remaining two and here h3 okay so let's count from terminal to terminal to see what happens from here okay we have uh yeah one two three so h just h yeah is gonna be h2 okay so let's count we have one two three four five this is five if we come from here to here let's see what happens one two three four five this is also five and then from here to here we have one two three four five so you notice from whatever end we counted from you will notice that we still have exactly the same number of carbon atoms so the, the case or the rule that applies here is a scenario where you have multiple chains as the longest continuous chain. Which one are you going to pick? Are you going to pick the straight one or the bent one? Now let's look at the screen. Now what the rule simply says is find out the one that has the most substituent attached to it. Like let's say for instance we have this straight chain. If we take this straight chain, you will notice that automatically the attachments to it will just be one and then two. So you find out that you just have two attachments to the straight chain. So we have five carbon atoms with two attachments. Okay. So let's check, um, see what happens. Okay. Let's see what happens if, for instance, we take um, the curved or the bent chain. So if we take the bent chain like this, let's see how many attachments we are going to have. Remember, I, I advise circle it out, separate the parent chain from its substituent. So it will be clear and you would see the number of substituents attached. So we have one attached here. We have two, we have three and we have four. So we have this, that we have a five carbon chain, which has four substituents. So if you notice, this one is going to become our parent chain. Why? If you have a scenario where 
multiple chains occur as the longest continuous chain what you simply do is find out the continuous chain that has the most substance if you look here we have one two three four things attached to this particular chain that's why i advise you just um circle it out or carve it out or something like that so you notice that there are four substances automatically we have this as a particular um chain that has the most substance if we had gone for the straight you would notice that if i had gone for the straight cutting out the straight uh we are simply going to have just one here and two here attached to it and then compared to four you find out that four is greater so when you come to a particular point where the number of carbon atoms in multiple chains are the same thing what you simply do is cut out the chain that has the most substituent and refer to it as your parent chain so we have this so if we look at this we we'll find out that this particular chain would contain or possess more substituents than when it's straight so this becomes our parent chain very good okay so we go to the next rule now the next rule is about naming substituents and what do we do about naming substituents quite simple when naming substituents they are written as prefixes to the parents name with their locant separated from their name with a hyphen what does this simply mean let's look at the screen imagine for instance i have a particular chain one two three four five and probably i have a substituent of a ch group here um ch3 this should be h h2 h2 h3 okay first let's identify the parent chain we have one two three four five that's five if we come from here still one two three four five so anyone we use is actually the same thing good so if we decide to take the straight chain um you would notice that we just have one substituent now how do we name this thing now first of all identify the parent and the parent name is one two three four five which means the infix pent indicating five attached to the suffix a n e now the rule simply says that when they mean um substituents they are written as prefixes to the parent name with their locant separated from their name by a hyphen so first we need to allocate locants after identifying the parent chain so we have one this is two this is three this is four and this is five sorry about that this is five okay so if we look at this particular chain now and we're about to write the name the name of this substituent is methyl i told you that one carbon um substituent simply means met and then you put the eel at the end of it so this is going to be methyl now we write methyl now a very fun fact about writing the name of an organic compound is that between letters there is no spacing so once you have a letter and a letter as part of an organic name whether it's a substituent or the parent's name there is no spacing between letters however between a letter and a number there has to be a hyphen and finally when you have multiple numbers between numbers you put a comma sign okay so with that said the locant of this particular substituent this substituent methyl group is found on the second carbon so we need to attach that that will be two remember between a number and a letter what do we need to have there a hyphen so if we are to name this this is going to be two methyl pentane so let's try out another example so if you notice let's fill in the hydrogen this is three h2 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 this is now going to be h because you have three bonds remaining just one so give it to hydrogen h2 and h3 now our parent chain is the straight chain here so let's cut it out i told you guys it's actually i think it would be easy if you just cut it out to make you easily understand it now if we are going to allocate locants we are not going to start from this end instead we start from here why we need to follow the rule that states that you allocate locants from the end closest to the substance this is the substance the chloro group okay so let's check if you start from here to count is one two three four five before you get to a substance but if you come from here it is one two three and you've gotten to a substance so we are counting from here so we count one two three four five six seven now please note these locants are simply serial numbers that identify the position of carbon atoms in the parent chain simple so let's get to work now if you remember we said that when we are naming substituents we write them as prefixes to the parent name so the first thing is to find out the parent name there are seven carbon atoms in this longest continuous chain and the infix that corresponds with them um, um seven is hept because this is an alkane it's going to be heptane now we have a particular substituent here so it's chloro remember no spacing between letters when naming uh, and then let's identify the substituent of chlorine chlorine is found on the third carbon atom so we are going to have three 
hyphen between a number and a letter you put a hyphen so this is going to be three chloro heptane quite simple right good okay you guys try this try naming this compound and tell me what you think it is okay hint is if you noticed this is going to be two carbon substituent which is now going to be referred to as et eel remember go and look up the video on the parts of an organic name where you have the prefix the infix and the suffix it's really going to help you out to understand this video the more actually the link to that particular video is going to be found in the description of this one so just go to the description and you'll find the link on the parts of an organic name okay with that said um let's go into the next rule now the next rule which is the fifth rule is a situation where you have multiple substituents of the same substance occurring on the same carbon atom so what do we do about that like in this case let's say you have one two three four five and then you have chloro here and chloro here so what's gonna happen how do we name this this is actually going to be as easy as anything now the rule simply states that if multiple substituents of the same substance occurs on the same carbon atom simply repeat the locant of the carbon atom and introduce prefixes to the substituent which will indicate the number of occurrence so to explain that the first thing we need to do is to identify the parent chain and this is the parent chain of carbon atom if you seclude this you are going to have ch3 so how many carbon atoms do we have here one two three four five five so that's pent pent and remember it's an alkane why it only has single bonds pentane now the next thing is you are looking at the substituents but before that let's allocate our locants this is carbon one carbon two carbon three carbon four and this is carbon five good then the rule simply says just as you are supposed to name you are supposed to name these particular substances as a prefix however you need to indicate the number of time it occurs and how do you do that there are two occurrences and two means die so we are going to call this um dichloro dichloro now however if you noticed dichloro the two chlorines are occurring on the second carbon atom so we have as the rule says you repeat the locants as much as the occurrences so this is going to be two two dichloro pentane so if i'm to put it down together it's going to be two two dichloro so we go to rule number six which states that if a particular substituent occurs multiple times on the chain the locants of this particular substituent as well as the substituent are written as prefixes to the parent name now have this in mind um some prefixes are usually attached to that particular substituent to indicate its occurrence prefixes like die to indicate that it occurred twice try to indicate that it occurred three times letter to indicate that it occurred four times okay this sounds long and ambiguous so let's look at the screen to understand this very simple so we have like imagine we had like this chain of carbon atoms and then you now had like chlorine here and chlorine here so we have ch3 uh h is gonna be here remember if you notice three bonds have already been formed the remaining is just for hydrogen two bonds here remaining two is for hydrogen two bonds here remaining two hydrogen then we have three so how do we name this compound quite simple now remember we should have written the substituent as a prefix however there are two of them now so what do we do we simply first of all identify the parent chain which is one two three four five six and this is going to be hexane as the parent chain then we allocate locants one two three four five six now note i started from this end simply because this is the end closest to a substituent okay so now the next thing is we need to indicate our substituent our substituent is chloro it's just chloro now however there are two chloros which means we are going to put dichloro now what do you do about the locants you simply write as many locants as are attached to the chloro we have second carbon is attached to so two comma we have the third carbon attached so three then you put a hyphen between a number and a letter so do have this in mind between two numbers in the name you have a comma between a letter and a number you have a hyphen and then between letters there is no space no punctuation mark they're all written together so if you look at this compound this is going to be two three dichlorohexane okay let's try one more example on this room to see if it's going to sink in more so we have 
one two three four five and then let's say we have ch3 here and then we have um let's say we have another ch3 here now these two ch3s are methyl groups as we know so let's allocate locants we have one two three four five so if you notice that i started counting from here because this is closer we count one two substituent but here we count one two three before we get to a substituent so because of that you start from the end that is closest to a substituent which is this one so one two you've got into a substituent so start allocating locants from there so which means that the parent chain is going to be one two three four five pent is for five so this is pentane and we have methyl so it's methyl that is occurring here as a substituent and there are two of them so di methyl now what do we do about their locants you simply write them the locant for this metal is two the locant for this material is three i remember to put a hyphen between the letter and the number so if i'm going to write it together now it's going to be two three di metal pentane okay so i hope this is understood quite simple stuff right so we go to the next rule the next rule in naming alkanes is simple it simply states that when different substituents occur in the chain of carbon atoms simply arrange them in an alphabetical order as prefixes to the parent's name when different substituents occur in the chain of carbon atoms simply arrange them as prefixes in an alphabetical order to the parent's name so let's get to that what do we mean now there are some compounds that would have so many substituents let's look at this particular compound now imagine for instance we have uh chlorine here and bromine so let's start simple so we have that the chain is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 okay so counting we're going to allocate locants from here instead of from here why because from here it is closest to a substance so we have one we have two we have three we have four we have five we have six we have seven we have eight we have nine we have ten 11 and 12 so notice that it has 12 carbon atoms and because it has 12 carbon atoms the infix that corresponds with 12 is do deck now because it is do deck and only contains single bonds it's going to be the suffix is going to be a n e so this is do decay as the parent chain now the 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 substituents are going to be outlined i prefer outlining them i have chloro i have bromo now the rule simply says when you're going to name them as a prefix arrange them first in an alphabetical order alphabetical order a b c d so a comes before b and b comes before c so in this case now i will have that b comes before c so i'm going to name the bromo before i name the chloro so how do we name it simple the bromo is on the third carbon so this is going to be three hyphen bromo if you remember ensure that you put a hyphen between a number and a letter and then we have another that's all about bromo we go to the next one then two chloro two chloro and that's all the substituent there remember to put a hyphen here there shouldn't be a space here so if i'm writing it this is going to be three bromo two chloro do decay basically and that's that quite simple right so what i simply did is i outlined all the substituents and then arranged them in alphabetical order following the rules of naming and exactly that you have that particular name of an organic compound okay let's try one more to help us understand this particular rule so looking at the screen to name this particular compound which looks a little bit ambiguous um one of the first things i would like to state is this once you come across a particular chain of carbon atom a structure where you have a condensed group of carbon atoms simply separate that condensed group of carbon atoms what do i mean um spread them that is write them as single carbon atoms and then share the hydrogen amongst them so if i am going to start naming the first thing i'm going to do is to take away this condensed form and then write it in single file so that i can be able to note my longest chain uh before i start naming so having taken that away if we look at it this is not going to be there are four carbon atoms here so let's write them in singles one two three four now you can now spread the hydrogen amongst them this is three this is two this is two and this is two is exactly the same thing this is still c4 h9 now why i had to do this is so that i can be able to notify or note my longest 
possible chain without any hitches so let's let's count we're going to count from terminal to terminal and identify our longest possible chain first so we have one two three four five six seven eight so we have eight now the next terminal to next terminal is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten hmm. so we have ten and then we have from here one two three four five six seven we have seven we also have one two three four five six we have six now remember the one that becomes your parent chain is the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms so which means that if you notice the longest continuous chain is from here to here so let's actually cut it out remember i love cutting this out like let me use another color so that it would be very explicit so cutting it out cutting it out so i find out that every other thing that is not part of the chain i'm cutting it out so that i'll know my substituents when i see them okay so you find out that if you notice this particular chain has actually been separated from the substituent and this is the longest continuous chain which has 10 carbon atoms okay so let's name the parent chain the parent chain is going to be decane as we know decane why is it decaying because it contains 10 carbon atoms and it's just single bonds okay so let's continue with that said we go to the next one the next one is allocate locants if we're going to allocate locants are we going to start from here or from here exactly we are supposed to start from here why because this is closest to the substituent the closest substituent here is one two three four five before we get to a substituent but from here is one two three four and we've gotten to a substituent so let's get to that this is going to be carbon one carbon two probably use a different color to help us sorry about that let's use a different color so this is carbon one this is carbon two this is carbon three this is carbon four five six seven eight nine and ten okay so with that identified i think we can go on about the name now having allocated locants the next thing i am going to do is to identify all the possible substituents because i have multiple you know i told you guys that when you have multiple substituents you're going to have to arrange them in alphabetical order but personally before i start arranging i prefer to write them all out so that i can see what i have now the substituent i have here is a methyl group so i have a methyl as a substituent i have a bromo as a substituent i have a chlorine which is chloro as a substituent i have another methyl so it's still, methyl is there now i have a chain of carbon atoms where there are two i told you that whenever you have a substituent chain of carbon atoms they are referred to as alkyl group if they are completely saturated that is if they only contain single bonds so in this case now the chain contains two carbon atoms and two in describing infixes represents et et represents two carbon atoms so this is going to be et il remember our kills are substituted chain of saturated carbon atom so here we have a saturated carbon atom that is occurring as a substituent so we're going to call it an alkyl but what alkyl this is two carbon atoms which means et alkyl instead of calling it et alkyl just call it ethyl so with that said we have ethyl as a substituent if you look around are you noticing any other substituent if none let's get to name so the next thing is to arrange it in alphabetical order you know your ABCD, ABCD, EFG. Okay, we all know that. So we have that B comes first. So the actual order of naming it is going. Well, sorry, bromo. B comes first. After B, we have chloro. C comes next, and then after C, uh, amongst these substituents, we have E coming next, ethyl. Before we come to the last one, which is going to be methyl. So in naming the prefixes to the parents' name, we're going to start with bromo okay so let's look out for bromo starting with bromo um I, I would like to um start i already know the parent chain so i could decide to start rewriting the full name differently let's use a different color to write that name okay so writing we start with bromo bromo is on the fourth carbon atom is there any other bromo it's just one bromo so we're going to write the locant is four hyphen bromo then do we have any other bromo substituents no then we go to the next one according to alphabetical order this is wrong this is what we are going to be using alphabetical order so chloro is the next one and where is chloro chloro is found on number five and another is found on number five so which means we are going to have remember hyphen five comma five between two numbers you introduce a comma five comma five then hyphen ah uh, yes five comma five hyphen 
then chloro there are two chlorines so that's going to be dichloro dichloro uh, uh i don't think there's another chlorine since there's no other chlorine we go to the next substituent which is ethyl and where is ethyl found ethyl is found on the sixth carbon atom and there is just one ethyl group so this is simply going to be six ethyl uh, just don't mind this decaying here we're going to attach it later let's just take it out of here okay so we have six ethyl six ethyl okay so moving ahead uh i think that's the only ethyl substituent uh then we go to the final substituent which is methyl now methyl is located on number four is also located on number six i don't think there's any other one as a substituent so we have just two of them so that's going to be uh four six four six oh sorry about that so that's going to be four comma six dimethyl and we are done with the substituents and then we go to the final part which is the name of the parent chain in this case the name of the parent chain is the cane so methyl deck a and that's that it looks quite ambiguous but yes we were able to name this by simply applying every rule that was talked about in this particular study so with this i hope you have been able to understand how our canes are named just follow the rules try out more questions and as you try them out you get used to them thank you very much this is with sound learning made easy now i'm going to use a different ending i hope this video has been helpful and i hope this video has been helpful like this I hope this video has been helpful and with this you should be able to name our canes with ease. Remember, this is Witzlaut, learning ladies.